Good afternoon, friends. It's a real delight for us to have Professor Sandeep Verma, one of the most eminent scientists of our country, who has taken over the secretary, SCRB, TST, about a year ago. And uh, he has kindly agreed to give a talk. The second talk of this uh, eminent scientist talk today. And uh, as all of you know that we are uh, still going through the initial uh, hiccups and then hopefully we all will get used to this uh, idea of connecting to a large number of people through three different modes. One is this MS Teams and also the Facebook Live and also YouTube. So, Professor Verma is uh, uh, one of the eminent chemists that we have in our country, and he is, will be giving us a glimpse of what are the opportunities that one has if they want to do science, and how Department of Science and Technology and SCR we will provide. And on behalf of all of you, I would like to thank uh, Professor Sandeep Verma for uh, kindly agreeing to give this talk and uh, he will be the right person also to address any questions that you have regarding the science policy, science funding or how do we really take things forward in terms of doing science. So thank you very much Sandeep for uh, you kindly agreeing to be a part of this uh, very important movement and now I request my colleague Ilika Jimo to introduce the today's speaker, Professor Sandeep Verma. Thank you very much, sir. It is uh, indeed my pleasure and privilege to introduce a person of such high eminence and distinguished personality, Professor Sandeep Verma, Secretary, Science and Engineering Research Board, New Delhi. Professor Sandeep Verma is a professor of chemistry at Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and is currently serving as the secretary at CRV New Delhi. He obtained PhD from University of Illinois Medical Center, Chicago, and subsequently held postdoctoral positions at the Johns Hopkins University Medical Institutions and Max Planck Institute for Experimental Medicine. He is also an adjunct professor of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering and Affiliated Faculty at Center for Nanoscience and Center for Environmental Science and Engineering, IIT Kanpur. His research interests are in the areas of chemical biology, antimicrobial resistance, and bio-inspired materials. He is a recipient of several prestigious awards and fellowships, some of which are Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize, Goyal Prize, Swarna Jayanti Fellowship, DAE SRC Outstanding Investigator Award, BM Birla Science Prize, and more recently, the Distinguished Alumnus Award of Banaras Hindu University 2020. He is an elected fellow of the Indian National Science Academy, Indian Academy of Sciences, and National Academy of Sciences, India. He is also a governing board member of Indo-US Science and Technology Forum and Indo-German Science and Technology Center. He is an associate editor of Chemical Communications and is on the editorial advisory board of Cell Chemical Biology, Chem Biochem, and Journal of Peptide Science. So, with this brief introduction, it is my pleasure and privilege to invite uh, Professor Sandeep Verma sir to deliver his uh, talk for today. And on behalf of my director and also the SRTP team, I thank you once again for uh, accepting our invitation and for sparing your valuable time to deliver the lecture. Sir, please. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Madam, for your words of introduction. Uh, I would like to start by thanking uh, Director Dr. Nari Sastri for this for this invitation at this wonderful conclave of uh, summer research fellows. It is very nice. It is very heartening to know that a large number of students have agreed to join this program uh, operated by CSIR and which already reflects that how 
how excited they are to be part of the research ecosystem in India. And what I have planned to do today is tell you a little bit about how research is, not just how research is done. I'm going to talk to you about how you raise funds, how you raise money to work with your ideas or to create new concepts, new research opportunities with the help of uh, funding or government funding obtained through say, for example, SCRB, which is Science and Engineering Research Board in the Department of Science and Technology, New Delhi. So what I have planned is tell you a little bit about SCRB activities and also some new programs that we have added in last few months, which are beneficial as, 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 as a researcher, uh, contributing enormously towards the uh, research R&D ecosystem of India. So if you look at SCRB, it's a decade old organization within the Department of Science and Technology, and it was created with an emphasis that seamless interaction between government funding and academic and research institutions would occur, where we would be able to support highest originality of ideas, the most creative methodologies, and the ultimate impactful results that would come out of your research that you would like to uh, send out as a publication, create an intellectual property as a patent, for example, and then how can you take it forward with the help of SCRB funding to create even more impact, even more translational impact of your work uh, as we move around or move along the funding cycle. So if you look at the history from a sor sort of historic historical standpoint, SCRB is a statutory body of DST. So it's a statutory body which was created by or through an act of parliament uh, and it operates with Department of Science and Technology. Our funding line comes through Department of Science and Technology, and we are known for, for having a very versatile online research funding management system. We monitor, we evaluate, we assign the, the R&D projects with the help of a totally paperless versatile management system that we have created specifically for SCRB. So we, we have engendered as you would imagine, the most modern scientific practices that you can imagine in science administration into SCRB, and that helps us render a clear cut decision at a faster pace. Our interaction with scientists, our interaction with prospective pro, uh, PI or an investigator, principal investigator is faster, and everything is transparent, very, very regulated, and we conform to the government financial regulations, because this is again, when you do research through government funding, you are practically using taxpayers' money and we have to be ultra cautious when we spend and ultra cautious when we want to give back in terms of you know, deliverables, when, you, when it comes to high impact publications, patents and other kind of deliverables, which includes uh, human resource training. Right. So what we try to strive for is a synergy between academic institutions R&D laboratories and industry. So uh, it is clear when you look at academic institutions, when you talk about R&D laboratories, we talk about CSI supported laboratories, DBT supported laboratories, and many of our programs have a very strong industry component where we bring in the three, the nexus of all these three together, academic institutions, R&D laboratories and industry to create multiple programs, to support multiple research programs. And we also, by uh, while we go along doing it, we also look for supporting or, or sort of celebrating the, the excellent performances of our investigators with the, with, with the help of several awards and fellowships that we have instituted that we give out every year through very through open calls, through open calls and transparent, transparent method of evaluation and assessment. If you look at you know the timeline of growth of SCRB, so starting from uh, starting from say uh, 2011 to till date, basically in the in these columns, what I am showing you, there are some of the programs that we started early on. For example, extramural research (EMR) and very many other programs came in around 2010, 2011 in SCRB, and as we moved along. We kept on adding new programs and these uh, red boxes that you see are the programs that, that were that started and they are now dropped. They are not 
in function anymore. But what is important to realize is that as time progresses, we see which programs are being lapped up by our scientists where we are really doing well. We are, we are really helping out these scientists in conduct their research activities. And we have not only retained many of those programs over the years, but we have also created new programs such as Vajra, uh, Abdul Kalam Fellowship, Matrix Tari, and, and if you come all the way to 1920, these in these red highlighted names are the, are the new programs that I have started since I joined uh, SCRB, which includes SCRB Supra, Tetra, and I'll talk to you about these programs as we move along so, so that you get to know that what kind of breadth of activity starting from ITS, which is International Travel Support Scheme. We also support seminar and symposia going all the way to equity schemes like EMEQ for the marginalized sections of our society to young scientists such as SRS, SRG, and for established scientists, for example, JC Bose Fellowship and many other which we have started in recent times. What we also contribute, as you would uh, notice, is that we also have interest in certain policies and procedures. So we look at our online processing mechanisms. We try to make them better with the passage of time, wherever some of you or the investigators approach us with the problem. We try to rectify the problem so that our processing time, so that our processing mechanisms are as smooth as possible and they create what so, uh, no hurdles, no obstacles for our principal investigators. What we are very concerned about, and as you would say is, as you would see is the, the code of conduct and conflict of interest policy. It is a very, very important policy that we observe as SCRB that the code of conduct from the principal investigator side and conflict of interest from our reviewer side, when they are reviewing your proposal, what kind of conflict do they have if they pick up a proposal, if they try to give comments on a specific proposal, they should not have any conflict of interest. So we try to adopt, implement, and make sure that we adhere to such kind, such codes and such conflict of interest policies, which make the system more robust, unquestionable, and at the end of the day, we, we deliver a result or decisions which are worth, you know, sort of uh, uh, considering and there is no argument about the decisions anymore. We recently have started what we call as scientific social responsibility. This is a very interesting scheme that we have op we have started operating. What we do here is that for every approved project in our flagship program, which is called as core research grant, we give a certain sum of money to the principal investigator to use that money at their discretion to connect to the society. So for example, if you are doing research on say malaria and you want to conduct a workshop where you can, you, where you wish to teach a local school children about malaria or how, what is the life cycle of a malaria, uh, malaria pathogen and so on and so forth. So you can have smaller local symposiums, smaller local workshops, or you can even have bigger workshops from the funds that are being provided to you by SCRB under the scientific social responsibility policy. So it is almost an analogous policy to corporate social responsibility. So we always look at companies and industries and we ask them, what are you contributing towards society? Same question is asked by us to our PIs that you are doing research for your own curiosity, right? You are trying to push the frontiers of knowledge with your research. But when it comes to a common person, a layman in the society, how are they getting connected to your research? Are they getting excited? Is it possible that your research can ignite a few other ideas, some youngsters? So all that is bunched under uh, social science, uh, scientific social responsibility. What you find here is that uh, that if, if you uh, see uh, if you see, we we also have uh, interactions with certain other ministries like MHRD telecom, agriculture, and we do a lot of third party evaluations. What it means is that there are programs by other ministries. So in an inter ministry handshake, so to say, we run joint programs. For it's one of the program which we run with, with MHRD is our imprint program where we have used funds from, from SCRB DST as well as from MHRD to come up with this program of uh, industry academia connect that is called as imprint 
we have done a lot of 4G related research through Department of Telecom from agriculture and third party evaluation for very many agencies. So SCRB is not just funding research projects. It is also evolving new policies and procedures, and it is working across ministry lines to come up with new 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 concepts, new programs that can that can have a pan ministerial outlook that can reach to very many people. And you can just still connect to the ministries where research can be of great use. Yeah, so now let us look at, you know, once you submit a proposal, once a proposal has come to SCRB, what what really happens? So what is the structure of decision making? Whenever you think of a new idea, you have created a new idea in or, or sort of transformed your new idea into a document, which we call as a proposal. Now, how is that proposal is handled once you have uploaded the proposal on SCRB website? So one thing to to so one thing very important to realize is that we we work through what is called as uh, program advisory committees. So these 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 uh, sorry. So these these program advisory committees are the ones which would look at your proposal. So for example, if you are a physicist or if you are a chemist or if you are a biologist, you would send your proposal to the program advisory committee of, of chemistry or physics or biology. And there are subcommittees which would take up your proposal. For example, if it is a core research grant in life sciences. So in life sciences, we have three program advisory committees, one which is called as the biomedical and health sciences. So everything that would concern uh, has the idea would belong to say biomedical or health related new idea would fall under this category. Then if you are unable to decide where it should really go, then we have a small uh, a, a, another committee which is called as interdisciplinary biological sciences. And finally, we also have what is called as organismal and evolutionary biology committee. So between these three subcommittees of life sciences PAC, we come we cover almost an entire gamut of biological sciences research in India. So so other agencies such as DBT, which are more tech oriented, would get proposals which are tech oriented, but SCRB gets all basic science proposals which fall under these categories of biomedical or health sciences interdisciplinarity or organismal and evolutionary biology. So core research grants are handled by this this committee and this same expert committee in conjunction with an expert committee, which is shown here, would also assess quite a number of startup research grants uh, and national postdoctoral fellowship, which falls under the larger umbrella of young scientist scheme. So if you are a young scientist, if you have joined an institution for the first time after spending time abroad or after being a postdoctoral fellow in somebody's laboratory, you are entitled to write project what we call as startup research grant. And this startup research grant is a fixed sum of money given to a person with a very, very fast turnaround time. So within four to six months, you will have the first letter of approval or otherwise from from us. And then you could be sure that, you know, in another two months time, you will have money in your account in your institute to start your research. And of course, that is that also holds true for postdoctoral fellowship. So once you are done with your PhD, you would apply for national postdoctoral fellowship by choosing a mentor, by choosing a very cutting edge research problem. We will assess, evaluate and then award postdoctoral fellowship, which are about 500 per year. And that is uh, that is something really prestigious. And we hope we, we hope to create a niche in postdoctoral fellowships or postdoctoral training with the help of these NPDF uh, postdoctoral fellowships. So we kind of scatter. Now this slide basically shows you uh, what kind of success rates one would achieve when you look at uh, uh, when you look at uh, early career programs in life sciences. So I've been talking about national postdoctoral fellowship. If you look in 2017, 18 you will be amazed that in a year, in one year, the, the number of applications received were about 1500 applications, where after due diligence, after due considerations, we were able to support 500 fellowships and about 353 joined. In 2018-19, we structured the program a little bit further and we received 2000 proposals, close more than 2000 proposals, but this time the, the the 
number received, the number supported, the ratio has actually changed. And you will be surprised to see that we could only support 156 proposals out of 2000 odd proposals received, which also which reflects the kind of quality we are looking for. Not just so when you get a competitive grant, it is not that everybody should get money, but whoever has merit should get money. That is our motto. And out of 156, we could only attract 85 people because maybe the rest of them got a position abroad and they left. Uh, so here is a statistics uh, stat for uh, NPDF. In early career research award, one can easily see we, we received about 700 proposals. We supported 75, so we are working around close to 12% approval rate. And in 2018-19, receipt was 875, and we supported about 68 uh, research projects. Now, going moving from life sciences to engineering sciences, the scatter changes a little bit. As you would find if you were to uh, remember that quite a number of proposals, quite a number of proposals were obtained in life sciences, but in engineering sciences, unfortunately, the number is slightly different for obvious reasons. At times, engineering graduates do not go for PhD, right? Yet, in 2017-18, we got about 300 uh, nominations were received for postdoctoral fellowship. We gave about 112, so it's a very healthy 30% success rate. About 80, 81 joined finally. And, and, and something similar for 2018-19, where out of 500 applications that we received, we could only fund 56 because of a uh, uh, lot of reasons which are not really important here to, to discuss. But if you look at research career award, again, the numbers are in front of you. I don't have to go through all numbers, but suffice to tell every one of you that we consistently get good applications. We consistently get quite a number of applications. Then it is left to our peer group, our program advisory committees, which are headed by very, very established scientists that they choose which ones are the best. And we simply take their uh, recommendations and we go ahead and, and support these young investigators. What we have done recently is uh, we have uh, run a conclave for SCRB NPDF awardees, we brought everybody for an online poster competition. We have award ceremony and then we created a research highlight compendium. Whatever research accomplishments were achieved by our NPDF fellows, it was compiled as a as a book and it was presented to the secretary DST and many other ministries also got our research highlight just to show the kind of youth we have, the kind of research problems they are tackling. And of course, with all this, when you look at the outcome, the future looks really indeed very, very exciting. And so we are hoping to organize a second conclave of a SERB NPDF awardees. Of course, it will be online and, and we will share the dates later with uh, all NPDF awardees if some of you are listening to this conversation. Looking at mathematics and statistics, we will not go through all numbers, but, but suffice to say again that we have a healthy trend of getting number of applications, uh, decent number of applications, and especially in terms of uh, mathematics, where the numbers would still go down compared to life sciences. We have been able to attract quite a quite an interesting uh, diversity in our applications, both both male as well as female, both in received as well as supported. So I'm happy to tell you that the trends are very encouraging. We would like to get more quality applications, both from male and female, because obviously one can imagine there is absolutely no, uh, so it's like a, a total equity program. We don't discriminate between male, female, or other groups. And it is good to see that we consistently good, get good applications. And we hope that as time moves on, such type of uh, fellow, uh, such type of applications would even go uh, better or the quality will become even better. I take a pause here and move after these uh, core research grants and program for younger scientists. I bring you this uh, a new scheme or not an, I mean it's a scheme very uh, very exciting scheme which is Ramanujan Fellowship. So Ramanujan Fellowship is for our young scientists who are currently who are currently serving as a postdoctoral fellow in, in institutions abroad, right? 
and they would like to come back home. So all over the world. So Indians st staying all over the world are eligible to write for an Ramaduchin Fellowship. So they write a project, they submit it to SCRB, and the age limit set here is about 45 years after possessing your, your so you should possess your PhD, postdoctoral fellowships, MD in medicines or MTech and so on and so forth. So with all these qualifications, you write a project and if you are allowed, if you are selected as a Ramanujan fellow, the the extent of fellowship is about one, is, is, it is one lakh 35,000 per month. And we give seven lakh per year as contingency for your research work at a given institution where you have chosen to work in consultation with the head of the institution. So for example, if someone from say, say northeastern part of the country wishes to return to India, what they would do is they would talk to a place like CSIR NIST and they would get approval from the director. They would create a, a nice uh, proposal, get approval letter from the director that he is willing to host you in NIST if you were to get the Ramanujan Fellowship. And with this fellowship, you would be able to get access to a laboratory in that particular host institution where you can start work, where you can take PhD students. And our success rate of Ramanuj, uh, with, with Ramanujan Fellows is extremely, extremely pleasant. Success rate, I mean, is that many of our Ramanujan Fellows, after getting this fellowship, have been able to get permanent position within India, and that is a matter of pride for all of us at SCRB, that the selections we have made were so, so right. They were so absolutely phenomenal that at the end or even earlier, early uh, before finishing the, the Ramarajan Fellowship, the fellow was able to secure a permanent position in a research or in an academic institution within India. So this is a flagship program. We are very happy about it. And if you look at the area wise distribution in last three years, you would find that life sciences has the cake. It's about 38% of all the all, all the areas. Chemical sciences is following behind at 22% physical sciences, engineering, earth and atmospheric and mathematics. So you find that in six broad categories, in six broad categories, we can club all our Ramanujan fellows and as I just mentioned, their success rate in getting a permanent job is extremely high, and that is a matter of great pride for us. Startup Research Grant is a program that was initiated last year. So what we do here is that it is little different than Ramanujan Fellow. In Ramanujan Fellowship, you do not have a permanent position in India, but for Startup Research Grant, you already have a permanent position in an institution and then you write a research project where we give 30 lakhs uh, plus overheads for a period of for two years. So about 15 lakhs per year to start your research lab. So you when you enter your laboratory, which is cold and just a empty room, you can use this 15 lakhs to create a small interest infrastructure. And if you add it to your your initiation grant in your own university, or in your own host institution, that's that's quite a bit of money. And we again, we have about 500 uh, startup research grants across all areas, and a scatter is shown in this uh, uh, in this pie chart here. So, so we have again, uh, we have five areas that there uh, where we have clubbed our, our uh, applications. So, life sciences is right here, chemical sciences, physical sciences. And, and mathematics and geo earth and atmospheric sciences. So we get quite a number of proposals were obtained. I mean, were, were uploaded last year. Close to 2,300 proposals were uploaded last year. So you can imagine that the 2,300 new faculty or new researchers across institutions approached us for 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 startup research grant. And of course, out of this, if you look at 500 numbers, so we are looking at a very healthy. 25% of approval rate, which is a good competition, yet it is not that dramatic. And we hope that the numbers will increase. We hope that the quality of the projects will increase as we go around and, and fund uh, such, uh, such individuals. We also provide money for what we call a social equity program. And this, is, this, this program is exclusive to researchers belonging to SCST. Uh, uh, category and as you see from the trace and I won't go in much detail every time 
that we have been able to see a consistent increase. So, so there is a consistent increase from uh, in, in from 2013 till 2018, and, and 2019 was still uh, uh, better. That the number of applications increase and the number of funded projects also increase vis-a-vis -vis the number of applications. So, what 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 we find here is that uh, uh, we are able to make a difference in, in such such researchers. And now what we have tried to do is that instead of having three categories, we are only operating category A, which is here where we provide full support without any rider to our EMEQ or EMEQ uh, uh, project applicants. And the, the, the project money is shown here. The nature of support is we give lump sum of 50 lakh rupees for three years. So you can break it up depending on the requirement. If you require you know, equipments in the first year, the, the numbers would change, but total budget has a cap of 50 lakhs and it is spread over a period of for, for three years. And if you look at other statistics, you know, the kind of the break off of SC versus ST, male versus female. So we still, I would say that we still are maintaining quite interesting statistics and, and that sort of tells us that not only our program is exciting, but a lot of people are aware of it and a lot of them are availing. So for example, we 1400 people applied, right? So for 1400 applications means 1400 people were aware that we have such a program. They approach SCRB with the project and of course, then a decision has to be made and you have to give the number of projects which meet the criteria of quality, only those projects are funded within EMEQ program. This is another interesting program which was uh, introduced a couple of years back. This is called as Teachers Associate for Research, Associateship for Research Excellence. Now, a lot of times we are asked a question that, that, that the premier institutions, the, the Frontline laboratories such as say CSIR NIST or, or other CSIR labs or DBT laboratories, IITs, ICERs, they take away much of the funding. And so what happens to level two universities, level three universities or state colleges if they wish to do research? How can we support them? So TARE, SCRB TARE is the program that we have specifically created or crafted for, for colleagues who, who belong to less endowed institutions. So from lesser endowed institutions from say category two, three universities or colleges, younger faculty members are highly encouraged to put up a research proposal where they would be able to get money from us and they would do research in the closest research institution to their home home city, right? Or it could be even farther. And, and in addition to the salary they get from their university or institution or college, we provide them 60,000 rupees of fellowships for, for fellowship for three months. And what we expect here is that your host institution or your parent institution will allow you to go to these universities over the summer months, for example, and you would do research and we give about five lakhs per year for this, uh, for the for TARE program where 50% goes to the host and 50% goes to the parent institution. And this rider actually encourages even the parent institution, say for example, if they were to get 2.5 lakhs, they can use this money or the PI can use this money for their own research laboratory, or you can purchase some equipment which can be beneficial for many other researchers in uh, in the parent institution. So it's a, it's a great program and I am happy to, happy to share that Quite a number of applications were received uh, in in Tare. About fourteen hundred applications were received, and as you could, as you would see uh, from here, that that uh, about one hundred fifty two were supported, and surprisingly, quite a number, a high number of people did avail the fellowship uh, from from us, and about uh, one hundred thirty one people joined a Tare fellowship, and they were able to work in a. At a, in a better institution. And what I particularly liked about Tare, and I think if you look at the slide, it will not, uh, I mean, you will be, it is easy to spot. The, the male to female ratio is excellent for Tare. So almost, you know, it's, it's like uh, uh, 50 females to 100 males were available. They, they availed the, the fellowship, they were supported. And this is one of the uh, 
hallmarks of tare and we expect that more female researchers will join us we have special female specific programs and we really are committed to to making sure to to make sure that the gender parity in our research structure research funding is maintained and we are constantly working towards it and of course good ideas are always welcome when you look at uh, uh, such kind of gender parity scatter scrb also supports uh, also supports capacity building programs building programs so if you have summer schools or if you have a specialized school where you can teach for example robotics like so so in in iit delhi for example a summer school on robotics was held in 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 iic bangalore one program on mechanical testing and so on so forth so whoever approaches us not just the established institution but even say iit bhubaneswar which is a fairly new institution we were able to provide funds for first scrb school on noise and vibration so please do approach us if and uh, approach the pacs the pac chairperson all details are available on our website if you wish to run capacity building programs in your own institutions where you can call faculty from very many places from r and d labs from academic institutes and from industry we are open to the idea we are open to your suggestions and please do look to go to our static website and have a look how these programs work and we'll be very happy to get your uh, feedback one of the interesting program is not interesting is very useful program especially for our youngsters is international travel support scheme where we give uh, financial assistance complete financial assistance to young researchers who wish to attend workshop short term schools training programs abroad and of course we defray the cost of airfare we defray the cost of registration and per diem and quite substantial amount of money is reserved for international travel support scheme and this is again online uh, online uh, uh, application you are welcome to go and have a look at it once the pandemic of covid goes down and we are allowed to travel unrestricted you should look at it and please do send us your applications the good conferences that you are going to attend in the next so many years right so again some data on international travel scheme the most important data here in my uh, in manner of speaking is the amount of money that we commit we have committed close to 20 crore rupees in a year for international travel support and this is a quite a bit of money and we support a host of researchers without any discrimination if the conference is good you will get support from scr before your conference for the international travel so you please please have a look at it once you wish to participate or once you wish to take uh, take uh, this opportunity you have to visit our website and and get to know about our travel program so here are some stats i won't uh, uh, sort of tell it in detail but most important thing is to realize to realize is right here right now we are the uniquely placed funding agency where we have and this is a slightly old slide we are approaching close to 1 lakh investigators who are registered on scrb website so we have an scrb online website and you have to create your own profile for submission of projects and we have close to 1 lakh investigators so it's basically with 1 lakh investigators you are looking at crowd sourcing of disruptive ideas great ideas in niche 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 research domains and hopefully that we will we will come up with some excellent results in coming time so we really look forward to from our investigators to populate our pipeline with good projects and we support from our side we support it with the help of very very efficient e management of projects and financial uh, finances uh, i mean if you ever had a crb project and if you ever had project from any other say industry or agency you would find there is a difference and that all comes from our efficiency of handling these online uh, uh, applications online project management and online finance dispersal system looking at new programs that is quite exciting because see uh, i firmly believe that the funding agency should also evolve in with respect to the needs of the society with respect to the national missions which are launched so your thought process should be that okay if you have uh, uh, if you want to devote 100 hours for research 
and you can devote say 60 hours for your own little uh, uh, thoughtful ideas that you want to pursue but a significant amount of your time should also go for innovation you want to innovate your research you want to innovate existing paradigms and you want to also align your research to something which is of a greater consequence that is our national mission so if you think of sustainability development goals if you talk about the national mission how to align your research towards a security related problem energy related problem or an environment related problem these solutions will come from active researchers many of our our very very celebrated scientists who have been guiding us from day one they they always have emphasized on this this aspect that that the the solutions will come from within and looking at all this what we have done is i'll talk to you about only few programs that that that, that we have created a template a basket of new programs and i'm very very happy especially about uh, say uh, sarb supra because this program was launched to to think about profound research here see usually when we write a project even if you are a student if you are a supervisor it crosses your mind that what kind of success am i going to get if i want to execute that this research problems and usually people would like to think that we will get 100% success if i want to do this little experiment i will get what i want i will write a paper or do whatever and it will be the successful culmination of my idea but sarb supra challenges you sarb supra challenges you that please bring your profound idea please bring your disruptive idea where you have chance to go wrong you you would you would have to say in as many words that there, there is only 40% chance of success only 60% chance of success but my idea is robust and we give you a, a funding line that is very very open ended and you would be able to execute your profound idea and hopefully you will shatter certain paradigms you will come up with a notion an idea an explanation that will change your discipline that will create new kind of impact in your research area we are looking for those kind of projects from sarb supra and many many uh, uh, so we got close to 1600 proposals in sarb supra last year and if i i'm recollecting it properly csir institutions also got supra and they got supra seed money to create to seed an idea we have given supra seed money also to to germinate the idea in your institution and come up with a, a, a bigger proposal and i am happy to say that the the concept note that was written and the kind of ideas that was propounded in supra were picked up by pmo and it, the, our supra was or scrb supra was pmo's 100 days of science and technology agenda last year when it was launched in june the month of june so we were very happy we have had one successful year of supra call the other call i mean the call for 2020 was open we have received several applications and see we will they, that how 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 we will go forward and take supra and bring in transformative and disruptive research concepts and and make them work for for uh, uh, for our country to enhance our capabilities and to enhance our competitive edge at the global level in a given niche area of research another new program is technology translation award which we recently have announced uh, through social media through our website and it is called as tetra it is serb tetra tech translation award what we have uh, tried to do here is that we realize that when somebody gets a crb project or an idea which is funded by scrb you are practically looking at either publishing the paper file a patent train human manpower and create a bit of infrastructure for your lab so that it could serve as a stepping stone for your future projects would what we realize that although we have no direct role in accessing your patent but is it possible for scrb to do to go an extra mile basically if you have had a patent from scrb project what else can we do for you what else can we do for you to to augment that patent so what i show you here on the on the right side of this this picture is that if you can look at our projects it could be a srg it could be a crg project or it could be our jc boss fellows if you obtain a patent from a crb project we are willing to fund you extra 
unrestricted sum of money so that you can take your patent, you enhance it to TRL level five or beyond. Start your own startup. You can talk to an identified industry partner. You can go to any DST incubator for tech translation. So all with all these facilities available at your disposal, if it is the question of money that is prohibiting you from taking your patent and take it to the next level of investigation, Tetra is for you. So what we have done is that we have developed unstructured support. So we are not even talking about money. We are talking about how good is your patent? how translatable it is, how saleable it is if you were to make a prototype or a product. And then we are talking. We are in business of supporting you through tech translation. Uh, but the only only realization here is that it should be a sub funded project and somewhere in your patent, you should have acknowledged us that this patent is generated from SCRB funding. Then we are the people to go for extra unstructured support for for translation of your idea or translation of your patent. Very recently we have uh, engaged certain industry partners in what we call as serve fire. It is fund for industrial research engagement and it is we 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 consider it is one of one of its kind basically if you if you look at the concepts that we have created that we will have a research co-funding initiative of uh, SCRB. So here we are not saying that why don't you go and find an industrial partner and write a project together. What we want to do here is that we bring industry partner. We create a pool of money in one is to one mode. Say for example, if somebody puts say one crore, SCRB would put one crore and you create a, a co-funded co-funded pool basically where we are going to ask questions which are relevant to that particular industry with defined projects and with defined outcomes. So what we are trying to do here is that if you think of a group of industry or an industry and one typical example of a letter of intent that we have signed is from Intel, Intel Texas Instruments, Applied Materials, Mentor Graphics and NXP India. These guys, these five major players came together to put our first letter of intent for sub fire and with a commitment that we will create defined projects with definite outcomes and we will take it from there in, in the areas of say semiconductor chips, VLSI and very many other interest areas which, which are close to the overall ambitions or overall R&D sort of ecosystem of Intel, TI, applied materials and so on and so forth. So this is an interesting program. As of now, as we speak, uh, we are talking to a few other industries who have agreed to put money in this one is to one co-funded board and what we have offered to industry is that they will be equal partner in defining problems. They will not only define problem, they will sit on advisory committee. They will sit when we screen the project, they will select, they will do monitoring along with SCRB and they will also have a word in how the outcomes are going to be and if they see a potential then it is between the PI and industry or R&D laboratory PI and then and that industry to take it further in terms of patent, in terms of whichever way they want to inter protect their intellectual property. SCRB doesn't come under way. SCRB is just an enabler for, for such type of industrial research engagement. This is again a new concept. It's called as CERB Vortex. So what CERB Vortex is that what we realize that, you know, after a while, when you keep on giving research calls, there is a certain kind of complacency sets in investigators. They become little docile and they would keep writing projects in their little niche area without realizing the kind of breadth they can accomplish with their ideas, with their expertise, with the talent of students that exists with them. So what we have done is that what we thought that, okay, what we will do is instead of doing a more top-down approach, we will have a unique dialogue with investigators. We will try to find out from them that what is the future of their research area of, or their research domain, where science in their research area is going to be headed after 10 years. And after the, uh, a very, very intense face-to-face -face discussion now, of course, over uh, uh, Zoom or whichever way, we will create special initiatives, special call for what we call as priority funding. So we will put money aside for priority funding 
after talking to investigators and after trying to find out where is their area heading. And of course, then with that kind of concepts in our hand, with that kind of white paper in our hand, we'll be able to create special initiatives with funding. So we would ideally what we have done and we have already done a couple uh, one such vortex before the lockdown started that we have had a vortex in IIT Bombay where 30 to 40 PIs all the way from postdoctoral fellows. And this is another unique proposition from SCRB that even a postdoctoral fellow will be called or a representative or set of postdoctoral fellows will be called to these discussions all the way to professor level to come up with the ideas to come up with the the uh, uh, special initiatives and not only special initiatives we want their input on how the review should be held what should be the statistical r d indicators which the funding agency should use now you have to tell us that okay if you have given us few crore rupees how am i going to be judged you tell us and we will hold you accountable on what you have proposed so if you say I will deliver this, 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 then we will hold you accountable after the end of the tenure of the project, after you have done a good job in, in, in uh, investigating a particular area. And, and this I think would make the review process more robust because it's, it, it comes from the participation of the grassroots investigators. And also it helps us strengthening the statistical R&D indicators, which are otherwise more top down. Okay, you should have five papers, half a patent, one patent, and maybe two PhD students, and you would be considered as successful. No, the times are changing. The R&D indicators will also change. And what better than coming from investigators that how they should be judged, and this is what we have uh, tried to do here. So we will have a Vortex meeting for every discipline every three years to make sure that we don't run out of uh, ideas, and ideas are always fresh, and we can take them forward. So when you do research, you should be celebrated for your research. CSIR system has been a beacon for many of us who have striven hard to achieve the glory of say Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize. And in our own little way, what we have done is we have created a new reward system, which we call as uh, SERPSTAR. So what SERPSTAR stands for Science and Technology Award for Research. And this is a one-time career award one time career award which is uh, designed for colleagues or investigators from the age of 40 right from the age of 40 to 50 so between 40 and 50 we specifically cater to scientists who are doing exceedingly well right we we we, we solicit application through an open nomination process so you can have your uh, head of institution nominate you and what we offer is the substar awardees will be given a fellowship of 15,000 per month and a res unrestricted research grant. We don't ask that how will you spend the money. You can take 10 lakhs and, and, and support your student or you can buy a little piece of equipment or you can take it all as a consumable. So 30 lakhs for three years will be unrestricted research grant. And what we offer is 30 such awards in a year in all disciplines of scientific investigation. So we have close to 13, 14 program advisory committees and, and subcommittees. So all of those investigators who have had a CRB project in the past and they were rated excellent. So this caveat basically is put to, to reduce the number of applications. Otherwise we support close to 13,000 projects and it, if everybody were to apply, it would be extremely difficult to, to sift through the application. So what we thought is a good indicator that if you have uh, executed a CRB project and if you were rated excellent based on how you have been able to uh, execute your projects, the deliverables were met and you have done exceedingly well, you get excellent grade. And with that excellent grade, we would ask you to nom get nominated for Serve Star and God willing, if you were to get the whole, whole I mean, this, this whole uh, fellowship as well as award money and unrestricted money would be given to 30 such uh, uh, candidates, 30 such applicants. I'll just touch very briefly on uh, this national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems, which is run by DST, which we handled in the initial phases. So it's a it's an interesting concept basically where, where we are looking, where DST was looking for the development of, of technologies which, which are uh, tech, uh, application oriented, which 
feed into what is called as a cyber physical system. So you can think of uh, uh, the whole lot of systems that belong to cyber physical system and a list is given here like hybrid systems, AI based uh, platforms, systems engineering, sensors, distributing sensing, robotics, industry 4.0, right? IoT, IOE, so all these cyber based systems and the way they would interact with a physical system was the bottom line for interdisciplinary cyber physical system nano mission, which is uh, valued close to 4000 crores. And we have just launched call for what are called as technology innovation hub. So we have we are creating technology innovation hub in a hub and spoke model. So these technology innovation hub in niche areas of uh, say artificial intelligence, robotics, IoT, cloud computing, all they will they'll be created and then they're going to hook up to smaller institutions, to other universities to create what are called as application innovation hubs and eventually whatever IPR you're going to generate through say technology innovation hub and application innovation hub would be fed into tech technology translation research parts in addition to the incubators which are already available in the country. So a whole system or whole ecosystem revolving around cyber activity would be catalyzed with the help of interdisciplinary cyber physical systems and how you interconnect the cyber systems with the physical world is the core cornerstone of this particular na national mission. And, and of course, th this slide basically shows you what, what is going to happen here. And uh, if you see, we will have a uh, this panel basically shows we have tech translation parks, uh, we have innovation hubs, we have sectoral innovation hubs. Sectoral innovation hubs means if I'm trying to do apply cyber system to a given application, which sector would it belong to? Would it belong to the judiciary sector, energy sector, environment, agriculture, security? So they, these are bigger sectoral aggregations where we would like to sort of focus the kind of research that would happen around ICPS and a whole lot of other things are also built around it. Say, so for example, innovation and startups would be built around ICPS. Tech development, grant challenges. Of course, when students work there, when uh, faculty work there, postdoctoral fellows, technicians, we will have skill development in the area of cyber physical system. We are also allowed in ICPS to forge international partnerships. So each application, each uh, technology innovation hub can invite international partnerships in the area wherever you can find a, a, a given institution is strong. For example, if, if you find a, a given university in Germany is strong in, a, in say robotics, so you can have a tie up, you can have a partnership and this ICPS allows. And then of course, everything is going to be fed into national domain networks through sectoral aggregation, and we hope to create an ecosystem that is going to be very, very sort of intricately interconnected between the cyber systems and the physical system. So a whole lot of things will happen, and uh, and they're shown here. For example, PRIAS, which is promotion and acceleration of young and aspiring technology entrepreneurs. So all these things will be part of your CPS, and eventually we'd like to blend as many youngsters as possible in creating or in answering what are the grand challenges and competition around cyber physical systems as we go around and scout for innovation in a, a given sector or around a national mission that we have chosen or that an uh, uh, academic institution has chosen. So the final slide basically is to cap everything what I have talked about so far. So what, what we would like to they would like to invite, so not just students who are part of the summer research training program, but all uh, some of the some of colleagues who are, if at all, listening to this conversation, that please do partner with SCRB. So I invite all of you to partner with SCRB because we have quite interesting SNT engagement in ex exponential science and technology in disruptive technology. We have continuous communication with our stakeholders and we also look at societal obligations that are presented to us. For example, I did mention about TARE and I did mention about EMEQ. So in all these SNT engagements, if you were to bring in fresh ideas, 
please do write to us. Please do write to me personally. I'll be very happy to receive your suggestions. We do a whole lot of activities for young researchers because that, that is one common concern for young investigators that 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 established investigators perhaps are taking more sections of the pie than what they are, you know, sort of should be. And and but I would like to tell that we have ample number of programs for young researchers. In fact, if you look at statistics, 40% of SCRB projects go to 40% or below without even trying. Without even trying, I am very happy to tell you that 40% of the total projects are with young investigators who are below 40 years of age. And of course, we have uh, uh, schemes that sort of catalyze this process. We have SERVSTAR, we have SER, SRS, which is a sort of dovetailing program for uh, uh, DST Inspire. We have TARE. We have recently initiated what we call as Week of the Young Researcher with Deutsche Forschung Gemeinschaft in New Delhi and their bond office. We have signed a letter of agreement. We are, we are about 20 to 30 youngsters from India and 20 to 30 youngsters from Germany would come and stay together for to, to for an entire week. It is called a week of the young researcher. For one week, close to 40 to 60 youngsters will be discussing science. They would give us a white paper that what is, what is exciting going on in a given discipline. Then we are going to craft programs around such type of suggestions. We Moving on, we also have uh, interest in creating very top notch uh, science and technology infrastructure, which is at the cutting edge. So we have uh, telescopes being installed in places. We have centers, SERB centers. One which is very, very uh, exciting for us right now is one of the top most center in India, which is on, in the area of cybersecurity is fully funded by SERB. And they are providing uh, a great service to our country in terms of coming up with these how to how to negate the potential threats of cyber attacks. So this particular center is is doing a marvelous job. We are also looking at collaborations where uh, through specialized clusters uh, and, uh, and and we have a Serb IRFA, Serb Supra, which takes care of much of our uh, research requirements. And finally, we are also looking much into the future. What kind of transformative research can happen in India? So we are taking Supra through collaborations. We are trying to answer strategic research, transformative research, disruptive research. So any adjective that comes to your mind, which brings the best of science uh, to the table is going to be funded by SCRB, uh, which at times we would like our research projects to be aligned to national missions and industry and R&D connect. I just mentioned that we are having a program which is called a Serb Tetra, where you can launch your own company, you can connect with the company and we will be behind you with a, with unstructured support. Uh, if you have a patent which is supported by SCRB. So with these words, I think uh, I have tried to give you a flavor of what can be done if we were to come together uh, in terms of funding opportunities, in terms of funding being made available to young people, young investigators and established investigators. And I am now open to any questions that you may have. And let me thank uh, Dr. Sastri one more time for very for giving me this opportunity to popularize SCRB amongst uh, many younger students, many younger summer research participants who would get to know about our programs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Sandeep Verma. This is really a very exhaustive view of uh, the activities that SCRB has uh, been taking uh, for the advancement of science. I know that he is very, very busy. On behalf of all of you, I really thank him for taking his valuable time. Today also he has a webinar till 1.30 and then uh, he has so many meetings for lined up and there are a large number of questions and okay. I, I i would like to take a few of the questions because there are more than 56 questions that are there dr anjali so, priyadarshini asks is tare uh, available for private university can i can i stop sharing because then i just i can go for full screen yes
Yeah. No, okay. I can send. Uh, I can uh, go for. No. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, please. Yes. So, what was the question? Uh, is Tare available for private university? Tare is available for private universities. We we sort of take a call depending on the kind of uh, uh, research proposals we get. So we don't close out anything as yet. And if there is sufficient interest from private universities, we can change the scope of Tare program as well. So we welcome any 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 person or any researcher who has genuine interest should be able to get funding from us as long as the mentor and the mentee have put in an excellent proposal. So I know that there are several questions whose answers uh, are obvious, but uh, I just wanted to say Padmaja Fulevar asks, is there any opportunity for young recent postgraduates? Young recent postgraduates, uh, we 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 give fel we give a full fledged project to investigators. So if you have done a post graduation, you could be hired as a junior research fellow in that research project. So that is the only available opportunity for young post graduates as far as SCRB is concerned, because other competing agencies like MHRD and CSIR, they give research fellowships through NET or through gate examinations. SCRB is practically focusing more on uh, funding projects and at postdoctoral level and above. But to get hired as a PhD student, that is the prerogative of the PI who has a SCRB project. So there is a question from Chinmay who asks, yeah. how do you handle the failure of a project? And what is the most challenging things you have faced in the scientific journey? So let me tell you, I will not tell you the name of agency. That has happened to me while I was a young investigator and not really young. It happened to me in 2012 actually. So submitting a project in 2012, the project was rejected to answer your question. My project was rejected, which was fine. So we, I contested. I asked the agency that please can you share the, the referee comments and what and they did. They did share the referee comments and I we really went to the town. Basically, we read up in the library. We read literature that what really is the problem with our project? Why the the reviewers are unhappy? We fixed everything and we applied again. We were called for presentation this time, but we were asked to revise and after two revision, I'm happy to share with you that project did get funded. So it, it so it is it is the positive outlook that we have to have as a researcher because not every time we will get success. Even when you are doing experiments, experiments fail and one fine day you just get success, right? So I am telling you from my own perspective that you have to be just a bit resilient. The diligence should be there, a bit of discipline in terms of uh, writing the the best for project possible and I do not foresee any problem in not getting funding when it is available through so many funding agencies. I hope I have answered your question. Yeah, uh, there is a question from Mukesh Vasan and many others have a very similar question. A large number of people. Does SCRB support the research ideas from UG students? Because the population is UG today. That's why they wanted to be here. So uh, to tell you the truth that uh, SCRB, the mandate of SCRB is not to fund uh, UG students. But what one can always think of doing is, as we talked about social, uh, scientific social responsibility and the built-in mechanisms in SCRB projects, you should be able to work with a mentor. And they have sufficient you know wisdom they have sufficient scope of using some of our funds especially ssr funds to help you out with your idea so that your ideas can actually germinate they can take a shape and you get better prepared to defend or see we, i have seen undergraduates going to present research papers even in undergraduate in 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 my own institutes have published papers with me so that is also kind of a award or sort of a satisfaction you may get if you were to interact with the mentor. Thank you. 
Actually, a number of people were saying that it's a really good talk and there are lots of appreciations. And there is a question, an anonymous person who say asks, how do you design a proposal? Can we send a single proposal simultaneously for various programs? So, uh, of course, the latter part of the question is very clear and emphatic no. You cannot send same idea to for many programs that would be ethically not right. Having said this, that if you have a brilliant idea, what I would do is I would go to literature. I would read enough papers, see what is cutting edge and try to use the template provided by the funding agencies said, and about the introduction and the kind of importance of the project and slowly build up a project. And if it is the first time that you are writing a project, it is no harm. There is no shame in showing it to a, a senior, more established person just to see, not to comment on your idea per se, but have you made a compelling argument that why your idea should be funded? Because one thing I'm sure all undergraduate students here who are listening should realize that this money that I just talked about or whatever is done in CSI NAST, for example, it's all taxpayers money. We are absolutely responsible for the best quality research, cutting edge ideas. So you take up your idea, write, rewrite, show it to people. And when you are ready to submit, just go ahead and submit, but only to one program. Right? Don't Thanks. don't send the same idea at the same time to many programs. Uh, actually, this program is also being uh, live streaming in Facebook. And I got mm -hmm. a sheets, uh, two sheets of papers where so many questions are there. And so uh, that is uh, very similar. Ask, ask, ask easy questions. One, <laughs> one question is, so, what about EWS reservation in research? Economic weaker sections. Unfortunately, there is no such uh, sort, uh, sort of condition that has been built in for EWS uh, uh, sections in research because once you have entered your research program, the the current financial guidelines and the current current SERB guidelines do not have that provision of EWS reservation or EWS uh, bringing a new program for EWS in SCRB. So I will ask one final question because there are a okay. large number of questions. Does uh, machine learning come under any of the category engineering science or mathematics statistics? So we have uh, at least two, two or three programs where you can bring in machine learning, right? So one is if it is very theoretical, one could go to computer science program advisory committee. That is one possibility, right? You could also think very laterally and end up being in mathematics if you want to pitch in through a very hardcore mathematical standpoint. It is also possible to put this proposal in what we call as exponential technologies vertical. So I, I'm not sure, Sasri, if you are aware of, uh, if you've seen, we have just started a new program which is called as exponential technologies. So anything okay. that is out, out of the blue is exponential technology for us. Where you, but the, the caveat there is, one person cannot apply for exponential technology project. You should have at least two people, more the better. So one person from say machine learning, one from say health sciences, the other one from say cancer biology, and you try to create a synergy between machine learning, cancer biology, and say health sciences, and you come up with an idea that is going to be funded by exponential technology. And uh, we are committing a whole lot of money, quite a bit of money in exponential technology. And of course, Supra is available. Serb Supra can also accommodate uh, machine learning based research calls, research proposals. Thank you very much, uh, Sandeep. Professor Verma, you are, have been uh, extremely kind and generous in answering all the questions. And uh, all of you who have questions, uh, we you will be answered by the respective mentors and then uh, online also will answer. And on behalf of all the members of uh, CSIR, outside CSIR, mentors, mentees, students, we thank you very much for kindly taking your time. And this is a truly informative 
and very highly motivating talk and uh, we are all really really grateful to you and hope that uh, crb and dst will support our initiative to do some activity which will inculcate the scientific temper in the times of covid as we were discussing yesterday the crisis disasters pandemics and wars will bring the best in the people so now when the whole world is confronted with this covid people are looking at science and scientists and the country which is able to intelligently employ their knowledge and their innovative ideas to combat this uh, pandemic will come out in flying colors and i would like to ensure all of you that indian science is becoming only stronger under people like leadership like sandeep parma and many others and we hope that we come out flying colors by dedicating to science and have a wonderful time and once again thank you very much professor sandeep parma for your wonderful talk and question answer session thank you dr sastri and i wish the best the very best to all the mentees all the uh, research or undergraduate students who have joined this very laudable initiative of csir to bring them in this time of pandemic at least give them a flavor of science even even remotely even though if it is remotely and i wish you all the best in your journey ahead thank you very much thank you bye bye have a Thanks. nice day thank you all right thank you thank you sir